Glossary of Plant Morphology, Wikipedia Audio This page provides a glossary of plant morphology. Botanists and other biologists who study plant morphology use a number of different terms to classify and identify plant organs and parts that can be observed using no more than a handheld magnifying lens. This page provides help in understanding the numerous other pages describing plants by their various taxa. The accompanying page, Plant Morphology, provides an overview of the science of the external form of plants. There is also an alphabetical list, Glossary of Botanical Terms. In contrast, this page deals with botanical terms in a systematic manner with some illustrations, and organized by plant anatomy and function in plant physiology. This glossary primarily includes terms that deal with vascular plants, particularly flowering plants. Nonvascular plants, with their different evolutionary background, tend to have separate terminology. Although plant morphology is integrated with plant anatomy, the former became the basis of the taxonomic description of plants that exists today, due to the few tools required to observe. Many of these terms date back to the earliest herbalists and botanists, including Theophrastus. Thus, they usually have Greek or Latin roots. These terms have been modified and added to over the years and different authorities may not always use them the same way. General Plant Terms This page has two parts, the first deals with general plant terms, and the second with specific plant structures or parts. Plant habit refers to the overall shape of a plant, and it describes a number of components such as stem length and development, branching pattern, and texture. While many plants fit neatly into some main categories, such as grasses, vines, shrubs, or trees, others can be more difficult to categorize. The habit of a plant provides important information about its ecology, that is, how it has adapted to its environment. Each habit indicates a different adaptive strategy. Habit is also associated with the development of the plant. As such, it may change as the plant grows and is more properly called its growth habit. In addition to shape, habit indicates plant structure, for instance, whether the plant is herbaceous or woody. Herbaceous plants, a plant whose structures above the surface of the soil, vegetative or reproductive, die back at the end of the annual growing season, and never become woody. While these structures are annual in nature, the plant itself may be annual, biannual, or perennial. Herbaceous plants that survive for more than one season possess underground storage organs, and thus are referred to as geophytes. Each plant commences its growth as a herbaceous plant. Plants that remain herbaceous are shorter and seasonal, dying back at the end of their growth season. Woody plants will gradually acquire woody tissues, which provide strength and protection for the vascular system, and they tend to be tall and relatively long-lived. The formation of woody tissue is an example of secondary growth, a change in existing tissues, in contrast to primary growth that creates new tissues, such as the elongating tip of a plant shoot. The process of wood formation is commonest in the spermatophytes and has evolved independently a number of times. The roots may also lignify, aiding in the role of supporting and anchoring tall plants, and may be part of a descriptor of the plant's habit. Plant habit can also refer to whether the plant possesses any specialized systems for the storage of carbohydrates or water, allowing the plant to renew its growth after an unfavorable period. Where the amount of water stored is relatively high, the plant is referred to as a succulent. 
such specialized plant parts may arise from the stems or roots. Examples include plants growing in unfavorable climates, very dry climates where storage is intermittent depending on climatic conditions, and those adapted to surviving fires and regrowing from the soil afterwards. Some types of plant habit include Terms used in describing plant habit, include Duration of individual plant lives are described using these terms. Annual plants that live, reproduce, and die in one growing season, biennial plants that need two growing seasons to complete their life cycle, normally completing vegetative growth the first year and flowering the second year, herb C. herbaceous, herbaceous plants with shoot systems that die back to the ground each year both annual and nonwoody perennial plants, herbaceous perennial nonwoody plants that live for more than two years with the shoot system dying back to soil level. Each year, woody perennial true shrubs and trees, and some vines, with shoot systems that remain alive above the soil level from one year to the next, monocarpic plants that live for a number of years then, after flowering and seed setting, die. Plant structures or organs fulfill specific functions, and those functions determine the structures that perform them. Among terrestrial plants, the vascular and nonvascular plants evolved independently in terms of their adaptation to terrestrial life and are treated separately here. Common structural elements are present in the embryonic part of the life cycle, which is the diploid multicellular phase. The embryo develops into the sporophyte which at maturity produces haploid spores, which germinate to produce the gametophyte, the haploid multicellular phase. The haploid gametophyte then produces gametes, which may fuse to form a diploid zygote, and finally an embryo. This phenomenon of alternating diploid and haploid multicellular phases is common to the embryophytes and is referred to as the alternation of generations. A major difference between vascular and nonvascular plants is that in the latter the haploid gametophyte is the more visible and longer lived stage. In vascular plants, the diploid sporophyte has evolved as the dominant and visible phase of the life cycle. In seed plants and some other groups of vascular plants the gametophyte phases are strongly reduced in size and contained within the pollen and ovules. The female gametophyte is entirely contained within the sporophyte's tissues, while the male gametophyte in its pollen grain is released and transferred by wind or animal vectors to fertilize the ovules. Adventitious roots that form from other than the hypocotyl or from other roots. Roots forming on the stem are adventitious, aerial roots growing in the air, crown the place where the roots and stem meet which may or may not be clearly visible, fibrous describes roots that are thread-like and normally tough, fleshy describes roots that are relatively thick and soft, normally made up of storage tissue. Roots are typically long and thick but not thickly rounded in shape, hostorial specialized roots that invade other plants and absorb nutrients from those plants. Lignotuber root tissue that allows plants to regenerate after fire or other damage, primary root that develop from the radical of the embryo, and is normally the first root to emerge from the seed as it germinates, root hairs very small roots, often one cell wide, that do most of the water and nutrient absorption, secondary. Roots forming off of the primary root, often called branch roots, Taproot a primary root that more or less enlarges and grows downward into the soil, tuberous roots that are thick and soft with storage tissue, and are typically thick and round in shape. Plant Habit Amongst the vascular plants, the structures and functions of the pteridophyta, which reproduce seedlessly, are also sufficiently different to justify separate treatment, as here. 
the remainder of the vascular plant sections address the higher plants. In the higher plants, the terrestrial sporophyte has evolved specialized parts. In essence, they have a lower, underground component and an upper, aerial component. The underground part develops roots that seek water and nourishment from the soil, while the upper component, or shoot, grows toward the light and develops a plant stem, leaves and specialized reproductive structures. In angiosperms, the sporangia are located in the stamen anthers and ovules. The specialized sporangia bearing stem is the flower. In angiosperms, if the female sporangium is fertilized, it becomes the fruit, a mechanism for dispersing the seeds produced from the embryo. Thus, the terrestrial sporophyte has two growth centers, the stem growing upwards while the roots grow downwards. New growth occurs at the tips of both the shoot and roots, where the undifferentiated cells of the meristem divide. Branching occurs to form new apical meristems. Growth of the stem is indeterminate in pattern. The functions of the stem are to raise and support the leaves and reproductive organs above the level of the soil, to facilitate absorption of light for photosynthesis, gas exchange, water exchange, pollination, and seed dispersal. The stem also serves as a conduit, from roots to overhead structures, for water and other growth-enhancing substances. These condits consist of specialized tissues known as vascular bundles, which give the name vascular plants to the angiosperms. The point of insertion, on the stem, of leaves or buds is a node, and the space between two successive nodes, an internode. The leaves, which emerge from the shoot, are specialized structures that carry out photosynthesis and gas and water exchange. They are sheathed by an outer layer or epidermis that is coated with a waxy waterproof protective layer, which is punctuated by specialized pores, known as stomata, which regulate gas and water exchange. The leaves also possess vascular bundles, which are generally visible as veins whose patterns are called venation. Leaves tend to have a shorter lifespan than the stems or branches that bear them, and when they fall, an area at the attachment zone, called the abscission zone leaves a scar on the stem. In the angle between the leaf and the stem, is the axil. Here can be found buds, which are miniature and often dormant branches with their own apical meristem. They are often covered by leaves. The flower, which is one of the defining features of angiosperms, is essentially a stem whose leaf primordia become specialized, following which the apical meristem stops growing, a determinate growth pattern, in contrast to vegetative stems. The flower stem is known as a pedicel, and those flowers with such a stem are called pedicel late while those without are called sessile. In the angiosperms, the flowers are arranged on a flower stem as an inflorescence. Just beneath the flower there may be a modified, and usually reduced, leaf, called a bract. A secondary smaller bract is a bracteole, often on the side of the pedicel, and generally paired. A series of bracts subtending the calyx is an epicalyx. Angiosperms are dealt with in more detail here, these structures are very different in gymnosperms. In angiosperms, the specialized leaves that play a part in reproduction are arranged around the stem in an ordered fashion, from the base to the apex of the flower. The floral parts are arranged at the end of a stem without any internodes. The receptacle is generally very small. Some flower parts are solitary, while others may form a tight spiral, or whorl, around the flower stem. First, at the base, 
are those non-reproductive structures involved in protecting the flower when it is still a bud, the sepals, then are those parts that play a role in attracting pollinators and are typically colored, the petals, which together with the sepals make up the perianth. If the perianth is differentiated, the outer whorl of sepals forms the calyx, and the inner whorl of petals, the corolla. If the perianth is not differentiated into sepals and petals, they are collectively known as tepals. In some flowers, a tube or cup-like hypanthium is formed above or around the ovary and bears the sepals, petals, and stamens. There may also be a nectary producing nectar. Nectaries may develop on or in the perianth, receptacle, andrecium, or genoecium. In some flowers nectar may be produced on nectariferous discs. Discs may arise from the receptacle and are donut or disc-shaped. They may also surround the stamens, be at the stamen bases, or be inside the stamina. Finally, the actual reproductive parts form the innermost layers of the flower. These leaf primordia become specialized as sporophylls, leaves that form areas called sporangia, which produce spores, and cavitate internally. The sporangia on the sporophytes of pteridophytes are visible, but those of gymnosperms and angiosperms are not. In the angiosperms there are two types. Some form male organs, the male sporangia producing microspores. Others form female organs, the female sporangia producing a single large megaspore. These in turn produce the male gametophytes and female gametophytes. Duration Plant Structures These two components are the andrecium and genoecium, respectively. The andrecium is a collective term for the male organs. While sometimes leaf-like, more commonly they consist of a long thread-like column, the filament, surmounted by a pollen-bearing anther. The anther usually consists of two fused theci. A theca is two microsporangia. The genoecium is the collective term for the female organs. A carpal is a modified megasporophyll consisting of two or more ovules, which develop conduplicatively. The carpals may be single, or collected together, to form an ovary and contain the ovules. Another term, pistil, refers to the ovary as its expanded base, the style, a column arising from the ovary, and an expanded tip, the stigma. Adventitious root systems, fibrous root originate from the base of a young stem and replace the primary root, and emanate as a parallel cluster or bunch from around the node. The adventitious roots of monocots are usually of this type. Replacement of a taproot system by a fibrous root is seen in onions, tubros, grasses, etc. Fibrous roots from normal stem nodes are seen in grasses like maize, sugarcane, bamboo, etc. Fibrous roots from nodes help in the survival of the plant and thus in vegetative reproduction. When the plant's base is damaged or cut inside the stem axis, many dicots, too, release adventitious toots from stem nodes, especially those that can regenerate vegetatively and those that have a weak stem with creeping habit. These roots are called adventitious, not fibrous, roots, adventitious storage roots similar function as storage taproots. Tuberous roots or root tubers narrow sense, those storage roots that do not conform to a specific shape, such as fasciculated, nodulose maniliform, annulated, etc., e.g. sweet potato, whose edible part is a root of this type. Broader sense, adventitious roots swollen due to their storage function fasciculated root when several tubercular roots grow as a parallel bunch or bundle. 
seen in Dahlia sp, Rulia tuberosa, Asparagus racemosus, etc. Orcus maculata have a pair of bulbous storage roots, nodulose root not to be confused with root nodules. Storage pattern is a root axis swollen near the apical portion, thus forming a bulbous or tuberous structure at or near the root tip. It is commonly seen associated with a rhizomatous stem. It is seen in Costus speciosus, Curcuma amata, Curcuma domes tica, Asparagus sprengri, arrowroot, etc. and some species of Calathea, maniliform or beaded root when more than one swelling, or nodule-like, structures occur at intervals along the root axis. Such an alternating swollen and constricted pattern is seen in Cyperus sp, Dioscorea alata, Vitus trifolia, Portulaca sp, Basella sp, Mamortica sp and some grasses, annulated root-like maniliform roots, annulated roots also contain alternating swollen and constricted regions but here the length of constricted regions is so short that the root appears as a stack of discs. It is seen in Cephalus ipicacuana. Introduction Life Cycle Morphology Vegetative Structures Floral Structure Within the stamen, the microsporangium forms grains of pollen, surrounded by a protective microspore, which form the male gametophyte. Within the carpal the megasporangium form the ovules, with its protective layers in the megaspore, and the female gametophyte. Unlike the male gametophyte, which is transported in the pollen, the female gametophyte remains within the ovule. Blade C. Lamina Lamina the flat and laterally expanded portion of a leaf blade, leaflet a separate blade, among others, of a compound leaf, ligule a projection from the top of the sheath on the adaxial side of the sheath blade joint in grasses, midrib the central vein of the leaf blade, midvein the central vein of a leaflet, petiole a leaf stalk supporting a blade and attaching to a stem at a node, petiolol the leaf stalk of a leaflet, pulvinus the swollen base of a petiole, or petiolol, usually involved in leaf movements and leaf orientation, racula a secondary axis of a multiply compound leaf, rachis main axis of a pinnately compound leaf, sheath the proximal portion of a grass leaf, usually surrounding the stem, Stipules paired scales, spines, glands, or blade like structures at the base of a petiolol, stipules paired scales, spines, glands, or blade like structures at the base of a petiole, stipuloid resembling stipules. Most flowers have both male and female organs, and hence are considered bisexual, which is thought to be the ancestral state. However, Others have either one or the other and are therefore unisexual, or imperfect. In which case they may be either male or female. Plants may bear either all bisexual flowers, both male and female flowers, or only one sex, in which case separate plants are either male or female flower bearing. Where both bisexual and unisexual flowers exist on the same plant, it is called polygamous. Polygamous plants may have bisexual and staminate flowers, bisexual and pistillate flowers, or both. Other combinations include the presence of bisexual flowers on some individual plants and staminate on others, or bisexual and pistillate. Finally, Trioecious plants have bisexual, staminate, or pistillate flowers on different individuals. Arrangements other than hermaphroditic help to ensure outcrossing. Deciduous leaves are shed after the growing season, evergreen leaves are retained throughout the year, sometimes for several years, fugacious lasting for a short time, soon falling away from the parent plant 
Mars scent dead leaves, calyx, or petals are persistent and retained. Persistent sea Mars essence. The development of the embryo and gametophytes is called embryology. The study of pollens which persist in soil for many years is called palynology. Reproduction occurs when male and female gametophytes interact. This generally requires an external agent such as wind or insects to carry the pollen from the stamen to the vicinity of the ovule. This process is called pollination. In gymnosperms pollen comes into direct contact with the exposed ovule. In angiosperms the ovule is enclosed in the carpal, requiring a specialized structure, the stigma, to receive the pollen. On the surface of the stigma, the pollen germinates, that is, the male gametophyte penetrates the pollen wall into the stigma, and a pollen tube, an extension of the pollen grain, extends towards the carpal, carrying with it the sperm cells until they encounter the ovule, where they gain access through a pore in the ovule's integument, allowing fertilization to occur. Once the ovule has been fertilized, a new sporophyte, protected and nurtured by the female gametophyte, develops and becomes an embryo. When development stops, the embryo becomes dormant, as a seed. Within the embryo are the primordial shoot and root. Acrodromous the veins run parallel to the leaf edge and fuse at the leaf tip, Actinodromous the main veins of a leaf radiate from the tip of the petiole, Brachidodromous the veins turn away from the leaf edge to join the next higher vein, Campylodromous secondary veins diverge at the base of the lamina and rejoin at the tip, Craspidodromous secondary veins run straight to the leaf edge and end there, Furcate forked, dividing into two divergent branches. Reproductive Structures in angiosperms, as the seed develops after fertilization, so does the surrounding carpal, its walls thickening or hardening, developing colors or nutrients that attract animals or birds. This new entity with its dormant seeds is the fruit, whose functions are protecting the seed and dispersing it. In some cases, andrecium and gynecium may be fused. The resulting structure is a genandrium, which is supported by an androgynous fori. Plants, with regard to identification and classification, are not often characterized by their roots, which are important in determining plant duration. However, in some groups, including the grasses, roots are important for proper identification. Leaf parts a complete leaf is composed of a blade, petiole, and stipules, but in many plants one or more might be lacking or highly modified. Duration of Leaves Venation Leaf Arrangement or Philotaxy Fertilization and Embryogenesis Leaf Type Leaf Blade Shape Whirl three or more leaves or branches or pedicels arising from the same node. Vegetative morphology Leaf base shape Abruptly pinnate a compound leaf without a terminal leaflet. Leaf blade apex Semiamplexical the leaf base wraps around the stem, but not completely. Roots Root Structure Terms Terms classifying roots and their modifications Leaf Blade Margins Fruits are the matured ovary of seed-bearing plants and they include the contents of the ovary, which can be floral parts like the receptacle, involucre, calyx, and others that are fused to it. Fruits are often used to identify plant taxa and help to place the species in the correct family or differentiate different groups within the same family. Fruits are divided into different types depending on how they form, were, or how they open and what parts they are composed of. 
stems, buds, leaves, epidermis and periderm texture, floral morphology, basic flower parts, andrecium, genoesium, other inflorescences, insertion of floral parts, specialized terms, union of flower parts, flower sexuality and presence of floral parts, flower symmetry, pollination and fertilization, embryo development, fruits and seeds, Terms for fruits, fruit types, seedless reproduction, pteridophytes, bryophytes, gametangium, sporangium, bibliography, general, systematics, anatomy and morphology, glossaries. Dictionaries Accumulate narrowing to a point, acute with a sharp, rather abrupt ending point, acutifolius with acute leaves. Crenulate with shallow, small rounded teeth. Echinocarpsia keen, a keen dry indehiscent fruit, they have one seed and form from a single carpal, the seed is distinct from the fruit wall. Caryopsis the pericarp and seed are fused together, the fruit of many grasses, droop outer fleshy parts around a shell with a seed inside, nut a fruit formed from a pistil with multiple carpels and having a woody covering. E.g. hickory, pecan, and oak, nutlet a small nut, pod a dry dehiscent fruit containing many seeds. Examples include follicles, dehiscent capsules, and many but not all legumes, pome accessory fruit from one or more carpels, specific to the apple and some related genera in the family Rosaceae, Samara winged akeen, e.g. maples, utricle a small inflated fruit with one seed that has thin walls. Fruits are usually one-seeded. Some species of amaranth,